What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs. Gotta eat. And welcome back to our most popular video this summer. Five more players to let your idiot league mates draft in 2021 fantasy football. This was uh this was the title thought of by our fake intern Tony. So props to fake intern Tony, who uh, I'm sure will get fired by the end of this video. But thanks for the title because it's doing hella wella on YouTube. Okay, so we want to run a bike with five more players in fantasy football to let your idiot league mates draft. And I know I said this this week was going to be strategy video yesterday. We went through five different drafts and talk about the best draft strategy from picks five through eight. The day before we went one through four. And I was like, listen, I laid my entire fucking brain out into that video yesterday. So I feel like if you're in the back half of the draft, you probably should have gotten enough strategy from those first two videos to know how you're attacking the end of the draft. And you know what, if you're sitting there and you're like, I'm picks nine through 12, I really, really need to know what I'm doing here. Maybe I'll hit you with that next week, okay? So complain enough, yell about it in the comment section. If we get enough screams and shrieks, uh, about strategy at the end of your first round at the end of the draft picks. Maybe I'll circle bike on it. But for today, 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 we are we are jumping in to five more players to let your idiot league mates draft in 2021 fantasy football. If you fuck with the video at any point, please consider consider with your deepest heart subscribing to the channel. We are flying up the sub numbers, and uh, I love each and every one of you that are new to the channel that have been around for the last four or five years as we build up what we call BDGE Big Dogs Got Eight. So I'm pumped to have you. I'm pumped for the weekend to come in, but we've got a ton of good content still to hit your eyeballs. That being said, before we do it, it's time to tuck our shirts in. It's time to stop yelling. It's time to eat. I know a lot of y'all are going to ask me where you get that fly-ass shirt, Nicholas, and... This is one of my favorite websites in the world. All of my short sleeve button downs come from this Australian website called Barney Cools. This is not a paid ad, although I've tried to get them to give me a sponsorship. They won't fucking do it. Instead, I just keep spending money on their website and it works for them. So it might work for you. Trying to look fly this summer. Barney Cools. Like Barney, like the fucking weird purple dinosaur that we used to admire when we were children for whatever fucking reason. What was the premise of that? Okay. Anyway, sorry. All right. First up on this list, five players let your league mates draft. So it might come as a shock to y'all, but it's Saquon Barkley of the New York Giants. All right. And this is for the homies. I realize that a lot of y'all are really in depth with fantasy at this point. A lot of you guys understand that Saquon should be dropping to the back end of the first round to the early second round at this point. So this little sentiment here is for some of y'all drafting in serious or, you know, less than serious leagues. Maybe uh, your friend Timmy, who uh, is playing fantasy football for the first time, your uncle Timmy, who just had his fucking third child with the wife that he actually I can't really say that because that's your aunt but y'all get the point this is for the people where Saquon Barkley is going to go in the top five picks dare I say the top three because he's Saquon Barkley all right again this is a video to shout out to your idiot league mates all right and y'all are not idiots because you're not drafting Saquon in the top three you're not drafting Saquon in the top five there's just no reason to take on the risk with Saquon Barkley that early in the draft when there's other bust proof players on top in the first three four five six picks in fantasy football drafts. You know, I, I'm, I took a lot of heat on Twitter today. I actually muted the tweet as soon as I put it out because I knew fucking Giants Twitter was going to come at my neck for this one. But when you look at Saquon's 2021 outlook, just think about it for a second after I say this, okay? Don't just, don't just start fucking yelling. You're going to wake up your neighbors. The only real thing Saquon Barkley has going for him as a positive outlook for 2021 fantasy football is his freakish athleticism. If you looked at the situation objectively, relative to almost every other fantasy running back, Saquon ranks very, very low in everything but pure athleticism, okay? He's one year removed from this ACL tear, and based on basically every report that we've seen this summer, he's not 100%, right? Or else we wouldn't have the reports about him questioning whether or not he's 100%. If they're even asking whether or not he's going to be ready for week one, he's not 100%. We don't know if he's going to be ready for week one. And if he is, there's a really good chance that he's limited. But I don't think enough people are factoring everything else in. Right. That is like the, that is the big thing. It's like whether or not he's going to be healthy is what is driving people away from Saquon to begin with. But the rest of the situation in New York and for Saquon is something that should should severely frighten you. OK, it should severely scare you away from Saquon that early in drafts this year. This offense might straight up just stink. 
by just about every single metric going into the 2021 season, the Giants have a bottom three offensive line. They are not rated higher than like the 30th offensive line among any site that I've done my research on. And a lot of places have them ranked dead last in terms of offensive line play. Kenny G is already banged up. Daniel Jones might legitimately just stink as a quarterback and this offense might implode. Last year, their offense scored 17 and a half points per game. That was 31st in the league. The only team that scored fewer points per game than the New York Giants is their little brothers, the New York Jets. 14 and a half points per game. 17 and a half, 31st in the league in scoring. There are so many red flags when it comes to Saquon. This offense could stink. The offensive line stinks. There's few scoring opportunities. And the only light at the end of the tunnel is athleticism, right? I would rather bank on that in 2022 than 2021. So I'm in a productive struggle rebuild in a dynasty league uh, in which I knew I wasn't playing for this year. And we had the startup draft this summer. I took Saquon in the first round, knowing that all systems will be go for 2022. And I'm not willing to bet on that for this year. There's just too many red flags there outside of just the ACL tear, which I think is the number one concern. But even if he's healthy, it's going to be tough sledding for him in that backfield, man. He's going to be eaten up with players in the backfield. They're going to be like fucking magnets to him with that offensive line. So if he's not 100%, he's not, he's going to have to make two or three guys miss at the same time. And a lot of you guys said like his reception total is going to be so high. But this is the same sentiment and the reason that I had him behind C-Mac a couple of years ago. When Eli got out of New York, when he retired, Daniel Jones took over. As a mobile quarterback, your first read is not to dump off. If you're under pressure, your first read is to scramble, not to dump off. And that's the difference between seeing 120 targets like C-Mac does and seeing 80 like Saquon does. So I think there's just, there's just, you know, there's levels to this shit and Saquon's not at that top level yet. Probably there next year, but 2021, you're not taking him within the top five. There are two many risks involved. Michael Thomas next up on the list. I can only say this so many times this offseason, okay? And I don't really know what's going on with Michael Thomas and, and the New Orleans Saints. It's ugly. I'm going to try to break the timeline down for y'all that have not been following in depth. Basically, he fucked up his ankle last year, right? It was a very significant high ankle sprain, and he went into the offseason with it still being a problem and it's still lingering, right? He missed games last season, fucked up basically his whole season. Now it looks like it's going to fuck up the entire 2021 season as well. The offseason hit, and Michael Thomas chose, rather than getting surgery on the ankle to rest it to rehab it in a way that he saw fit which is fine right it's fucking his body his choice the fucking me too michael movement okay great for him however he cut off communications with the team he did not let them know what was going on he didn't let them know whether or not he was getting surgery he didn't know whether or not like what he was doing with it resting rehabbing how the ankle was progressing right this is a front office that just paid him a lot of fucking money and a medical team that would like to have an opinion on what's going on with michael thomas and his ankle but he went complete ghost, okay? And then he showed up at the facility with the ankle still not healed. And then after months and months and months of it not healing, he decided that I'm going to have surgery on it. And now there are reports of fights happening. There are reports of trade rumors, which also aren't happening per Bill Barnwell if you just put fucking two and two together. Uh, but the relationship seems really ugly between MT and the Saints right now. And then, as usual, Thomas got in his feels and he started subtweeting like a fucking 16 year old girl. MT, the absolute cringe god. And then all of that stuff, all the red flags are, 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 are minor concerns to the major concern here, and that is the little literal injury. So the timetable on this ankle surgery that he's having is 12 to 16 weeks. That is a huge, huge rehab. You already know next summer we're going to be hearing like Michael Thomas, the ultimate buy low because he wasn't 100% in 2021. So what the fuck? If we already know he's not going to be 100% in 2021, are we drafting him in 2021? Don't draft him this year. For the 200th time this summer, don't find injuries in fantasy football because they're going to find you. The problem with drafting a guy like Michael Thomas isn't just the timetable return, all right? We're going to have all the fanboys that just go to the bottom level of the timetable and they say, oh, they said 12 to 16 weeks. So if I look at the date that that report came out and I had 12 weeks to it, it is fucking week seven in the season. Michael Thomas will be 100% for my fantasy team by week seven of the 2021 season. The problem is his re-injury risk is going to be a lot higher. We already saw him try to play through this ankle injury less than 100% last year, re-injured it. He's going to go onto the field likely less than 100% this year giving him a much higher re-injury risk than other players. The problem with him is not necessarily his timetable and that it's long, which it is. The problem with him is that his name is Michael Thomas. So if you draft him, you will feel the need to put him in your lineup immediately as soon as he is active on game day, right? He might return in week six, in week nine, in week fucking 12. We don't know. But whatever week he returns in, he's not going to be a full-time player. He might not be a full-time player for one, two, three weeks when he steps on the field. So you might be actually looking at a return timetable plus three weeks on top of that 
when you're putting him into your lineup and he's playing 40% of the snaps, 60% of the snaps, 70% of the snaps. There's a possibility that you can't even use him until week 12 into the actual season. I'm telling you, this is just bad news. If you're inside the single digit rounds of your draft, do not even think about it. Even around like 10, 11, I'm probably looking elsewhere at guys that can actually help you in the season. And if Thomas drops like the 12th, 13th, 14th round and you have an IR spot, like fucking sure. But some idiot in your league is going to see Michael Thomas. He's going to say some dumb shit as he walks up to the draft board. He's going to be like, see you in the fucking playoffs, bro. Uh, and then Michael Thomas is not going to play for him. And uh, he's going to look like a fucking idiot. And that's the guy that's going to be doing his loser punishment for the league this year. Speaking of, Animal will be doing our punishment in two days from now. 14th. This Saturday, Animal will be entering the woods for 18 hours with nothing but a machete and a water bottle. Stay tuned. We've actually had report. This is true. This is fucking true reporting right here. We've had reports of cougars and bears in the woods of our area back home. So maybe Animal gets eaten. That would be best case scenario. Basically, if you look at Animal's timeline in comparison to Michael Thomas's timeline, like best case scenario, 12 weeks, best case scenario, Animal gets eaten. Worst case scenario, he's just sitting there. He thinks he's all right, regardless. All right. Michael Thomas, hard fade off my board. Next up, might be a little bit of a surprising name here, but it's Kareem Hunt of the Cleveland Browns. Oh, listen, I, the, the title of this video is five players to let your idiot league mates draft. And we did we did one of these already. So if you missed the first five, make sure you go back and watch that video. I'll put the link in the description so you can easily click it and continue to give me fucking watch time for YouTube. Thank you. And I'll also subscribe to the channel, obviously, if you aren't already. These are bigger names that are more enticing to a lot of people because they know, okay? So these aren't just like fades at the end of the draft. These are more guys that have made an impact in the NFL that might seem exciting, but I'm telling you, let another idiot in your league draft these guys. I think Kareem Hunt had the best case scenario fantasy season that he could have possibly had last year in which uh, outside of like Nick Chubb tearing a full ACL and Kareem Hunt being the guy for the entire year. I think last case was kind of like best case scenario. Okay. Everyone was like, oh my God, if you draft Kareem Hunt, you're getting standalone value plus an RB1, high end RB1 if not, Nick Chubb gets hurt. And up to that point, one, that was terrible analysis because up to that point, Nick Chubb had played in 32 of 32 NFL games. Never missed a game, so there was no evidence to support that the chance of him getting hurt was high. But Chubb ended up missing four games. And in those games, you can see Kareem Hunt performed exactly the same. Nothing changed at all. Technically, he actually averaged fewer fantasy points per game without Chubb than he did with Chubb on the field. I don't know. So all you hardos are going to be like, yeah, well, if you draft Kareem Hunt, he was good last year. He was the RB10. And he did finish as the RB10 overall last year, all right? But when you look at fantasy points per game, which is what matters, fantasy points per game, do you know where he ranked? As the RB21, a low-end RB2, while scoring 11 touchdowns. That is a shitload of touchdowns for a backup running back. If he has a tiny bit less touchdown luck in 2021, which is not unreasonable because his touchdown luck in 2020 was absurdly high, that number is going to come down. I'm not saying Hunt's going to be completely phased out of the offense by any means. He's a great player and he's going to be very involved in this offense. Their entire offense revolves around the run game. Say Hunt stays in that same touch range, 235 touches. And remember, Chubb missed four games, so we might be overshooting it. 235 touches, same efficiency, whatever, still seeing 50 to target, 50 targets, very involved in the receiver receiving game, but he scores eight touchdowns instead of 11 touchdowns next year. He drops to between RB 29 and RB 31 in fantasy points per game. It is a dramatic drop off when he doesn't score a ton of touchdowns this year. Okay. So in the fifth round, in the sixth round, let whoever drafted Nick Chubb in the first or second round draft Kareem Hunt as his handcuff. He's not a handcuff. Handcuffs are like you buy a nice Ferrari, right? That's your first round pick and you're buying car insurance with it. That's what a handcuff is, right? The car insurance is one bajillionth of the price of the actual car itself. You're getting it in the 11th, 12th, 13th round, but paying Kareem Hunt's price for the fifth or sixth, you're not paying car insurance. You're paying for a whole ass fucking car at that point, okay? Kareem Hunt, not going to be on my board unless he falls to an extreme value. Someone in your league is going to jump up and grab the name Kareem Hunt. Let your idiot league mate do it. Let your idiot league mate fade Felix Gray, okay? Y'all have been following me for a minute. Know that I need my blue light glasses. Otherwise, I do not sleep well. I'm someone who stares at screens all day. Camera screens, secondary monitor screens, laptop screens, cell phone screens, fucking screen screens. Everything is screen related in my life. Thus, it infiltrates my eyeballs. And by the end of the day, my eyes hurt a shit ton. But the beauty of these... Felix gray glasses are that they are blue light blocking, which means 
that your face, your eyes aren't like, I need to be awake. I need to be awake. I need to be awake. So when you put these on at night and you ease into bed afterwards, when you shut the screens down, your brain is not telling you, okay, you're awake because the light was screaming into your face. If you're someone who goes into bed and watches TV at night, like I do, you watch your shitty ass Netflix shows, Outer Banks season two, absolute trash, but I'd watch it again. Not the point here. Felix Gray's blue light blocking glasses are the single best purchase I have ever made. I've been wearing them for years and years and years and years. If you're someone who's coming back into the office now, right? If your office is opening back up and you're looking at screens all day and your eyes are really tired by the end of the day, Felix Gray is the single best purchase you can make for your health, for your sanity, and for your sleep, all right? FelixGray.com is gonna be linked in the description down below. The blue light blocking glasses, I seriously cannot recommend these things enough. I've been wearing them for years and years and years. As soon as it hits 6 p.m., wherever I am, these things go on. As you can see, they're like pretty stylish. They they make, I'm not a smart dude, right? My brain is big, but I'm not really that smart. These things make sure that I look as smart as my brain is big. Damn, see, my brain's working right now, and it's probably because I'm wearing these glasses. They're stylish. They look good. They don't have the bright orange glasses like the lenses that you usually see on blue light blocking glasses. You don't got to look like a complete fucking nerd. Also, if you got prescription, they have prescription plus blue light blocking glass capability on the website. Please do yourself a favor and buy Felix Gray glasses. They are wonderful. I don't tend to wear them in my videos as much just because the uh, big ass light coming at me that's lighting up my beautiful, disgusting, pale skin is uh, very bright and would probably scare you guys off a little bit. But I'm, I'm going to keep them on for the rest of the video so y'all can see how how fucking cute I look. Go over to felixgray.com. Thank you for sponsoring today's video. I would have plugged y'all regardless if you weren't sponsoring me, but the link to their website will be in the description. These are called the Hopper Style, by the way, for those of y'all that are going to comment in the comment section. Fourth on this list of players let your idiot league mates draft is Raheem Mostert of the San Francisco 49ers. Raheem Mostert is one of, uh, if not the most explosive back in the NFL. I would love for this dude to occupy a roster spot on my favorite NFL team's depth chart okay no one is yelling other guy, uh, otherwise right y'all y'all are gonna sit in the comment section and fucking make up fake narratives and yell into a wall it's what you guys do and i understand it and i love you for it to be honest it makes my job way easier i like to play devil's advocate here explosive as shit love to have him on my team but this dude's got more red flags in the soviet union and i'm gonna start listing them down for you okay just just please listen to this objectively and do not look at like two fucking highlights over the last two years listen to what i'm saying he's 29 years old He's 29 years old. He has never topped 137 carries in an NFL season. He has never topped 16 receptions in an NFL season, guys. One of the most important things for me when I look at fantasy football players, you need to show me that you can be good at football for a long period of time. There are players who are good at football for a short period of time. There are players who are not good at football for a long period of time. Neither of those guys are guys that you want for your fantasy football team. And Raheem Mostert falls into the former category. 29 has never gone over 137 carries in a season, has never gone over 16 receptions in a season. He appeared in more than nine games once in six NFL seasons. The guy gets injured more often than Snacks has fucking cholesterol problems. A horrible fucking example. I'm sorry. I was thinking of a sick disease and I was like, I don't want to fucking of whatever listen like over the last three years he's dealt with a shoulder strain arm fracture knee sprain high ankle sprains I mean, he's already dealing with a knee injury and wearing a brace at training camp he weighs 186 pounds in 2020 Mostert turned six goal line carries into zero touchdowns and negative two rushing yards trey sermon is all we've been hearing about at 49ers camp he is their third round pick is the most talented bigger back the niners have had on their roster probably since carlos hyde in 2017 Excuse me. I didn't mean to say like he's more talented than Raheem Mostert straight up pound for pound. I just mean he's probably he's the most talented, bigger plus size back they've had on the roster since Carlos Hyde in 2017. And Carlos Hyde had a monster, monster role in this offense in 2017. Every report has Trey Sermon contributing to this offense immediately, getting a lot of time with the ones and learning this offense extremely, extremely quickly. Sermon outweighs Mostert by nearly 30 pounds. So figuring out who the goal line back in San Francisco is going to be this year doesn't take a fucking rocket scientist, okay? I truly believe that Sermon has workhorse upside, and maybe it doesn't come to fruition right away. Maybe it doesn't happen in his rookie campaign, but I think he's good enough to, and I think this matches a lot of the reports that they're going to let Trey Sermon kind of be the bigger back, wear down the defense, and have Raheem Mostert kind of pick and choose his spots where he comes in as an explosive secondary back. I think he's going to limit Mostert to be a 10-touch-per-game role kind of guy immediately. Can Mostert turn 10 carries into a 10 for 92 and two touchdown line? Of course, 
but I'm not here to fucking throw my chips on a, on the green zero on the roulette table every time I gamble, right? Like we don't do that. We don't want to do that with fantasy football either. And I understand again that Mostert is fun to watch, right? And he's had some terrifyingly good fantasy days over the last two seasons. And I think a lot of y'all have warm, fuzzy spots in your heart for that. And I respect it. It's kind of like Philip Lindsay, right? But taking him in the seventh to eighth round of fantasy drafts is asking for fucking more disappointment than, than sending a, a DM to Zendaya. That's not, not not for me, but if you guys did that, you would be disappointed with the outcome. In the same way that we like to blindly throw the word upside at receivers in fantasy because they're fast, we do the same thing with Mostert. Like objectively, Mostert, if you looked at it, took away all the bias that you had towards Raheem Mostert. He is uh, an injury-riddled, 29-year-old, 186-pound running back that is neither the team's primary pass-catching back or goal line back. You're taking away so many valuable things from Mostert's profile that the only thing you're banking on is breakaway 70-yard runs. And yes, listen, he does that. But limited volume, without goal line work, like, just no. I can't. Uh, dogs. Big dogs. No Raheem Mostert this year, okay? No Raheem Mostert, please. And then lastly... I'm going to throw Patrick Mahomes' name up on this list because if you're in a one-quarterback league, he's going to be the first quarter QB off the off the board. Probably be a third-round pick by someone in your league. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. If he's going to be taken in the third round, skip on that and take Kyler two rounds later. I'm telling you, Kyler has just as good a chance to be the quarterback one this year in fantasy football. In super flex leagues, obviously Mahomes is not a bad pick, but if I'm at the one-on-one, I'm taking C-Mac, not Patrick Mahomes. And that is it. That will do it for today's video. I'm out of here. We will see you tomorrow. Oh, we're doing a Fade the Public live stream around 1, 12.30, 1 p.m. Eastern time where we are going to be, uh, the episode name I believe is The Worry Jury. The Worry Jury. So we're going to be talking about guys that we are worried about this year in fantasy. We're going to be going over the first ep episode of Hard Knocks. We're going to be talking about animals venture into the woods. So it'll be a good episode. Make sure you set your notifications live. So subscribe to the channel if you want to be part of that. Hit the little bell underneath it so that you are notified when we do go live on Friday. And then y'all can come into the Q&A live stream and give us uh, questions, whatever you want to yell at us at the time. So again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're doing fantasy football stuff all August and September leading up to your drafts. Uh, and then in season, of course, we're going to help you get the hardware. We're going to help you bring it home. We're going to help you bring it home. Help me bring this video home by hitting the thumbs up button. Make sure you go watch the first video of five players slay your idiot league mates draft. I love you. I'm out. Bye. Okay.